Hello, my name is Carrie Sony. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the communication specialist at UC Berkeley People and Culture, and I'll be your moderator for the session. I have the pleasure of welcoming everyone to Transferable Skills, Applying to Jobs You Haven't Done Yet. And that's presented by Lisa Laughter here from UC Davis. As the senior career coach at UC Davis and Human Resources, Learning and Organization Development, Lisa Laughter is a seasoned professional dedicated to guiding individuals toward their career aspirations. And holding the certifications as an ICF and Clifton Strengths Career uh, Certified Coach, Lisa leverages her passion for developing others to empower individuals on their professional journeys. Known for fostering growth and providing strategic career advice, Lisa creates a supportive environment for success. A trusted resource and advocate, Lisa is committed to helping individuals unlock their full potential and achieve their professional goals with a focus on personalized coaching and strengths-based strategies. Welcome, Lisa. All right. Thank you so much, Carrie. Really appreciate that. Anytime I hear that introduction, I'm like, wait a minute, who are you talking about? Oh yeah, that's me. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see here. Make sure all my screens are up. Well, welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today to talk about transferable skills. We will be using the chat. Um, so the Q&A for questions in the chat, we're going to use, um, I'm going to be we're going to be interacting in some ways. And then I do want to give a heads up. And I'm hoping that we keep as many numbers after I say this as, <laughs> as we do. But we will be doing breakout rooms um, at halfway through the um, session. And I just want to note that if you're not comfortable or you're not able to participate in the breakout rooms, that's totally fine. You're welcome to stay in the main room um, and just take that moment to to chill um, and then come back uh, when be be involved when everyone comes back from the breakout room. So just want to put that out there that we'll be doing that. And with that, let me give you um, a little more of an introduction of me. I am really excited to be here to discuss transferable skills. It's a topic that I think about a lot in my role as the senior career coach here at UC Davis and UC Davis Health. And I really am passionate about supporting professionals, uh, employees find a role that's a good fit with for them that utilizes their talents and transferable skills. I've been working in higher education for over 26 years. The majority of my career, I worked with students and I started out in admissions and worked in advising and administration for the majority of that time. And I utilize my transferable skills to transition to the role that I'm currently in, which I absolutely love like this is the job that was made for me it's it utilizes all my the, the, my top five strengths up here in my little screen I just I really enjoy coming to work every single day so I'm look forward to supporting you to think about your transferable skills in the workshop today I'm a visual learner I like just to make besides my professional what I do uh on the daily outside of work um I love love, love being outside anytime I can be outside. I'm from Washington state and moved down here to California about seven years ago. So I love hiking and going paddle boarding and kayaking. Uh, the, this, this is my coaching community. The top one is my strengths coach and the bottom one, I'm the international coaching federation, uh, Sacramento chapter. It says my screen is blank. Is it not? It's not blank now, is it? No, you you. Have okay, your... it was just for a minute while I was talking. I didn't have my pictures mm -hmm. up, so okay, cool. Um, so yeah, the I'm the IC, president of ICF Sacramento, the International Coaching Federation Sacramento. So I I love hanging out with coaches too, and then that middle picture I did. Um, I put that in there because it reminds me I did a a TEDx talk, 2014, and when they asked me to do my bio, like I did my bio here today. Like, I don't know really what to say about myself, but as I was talking with others about how do I talk about me and what I do, and they said, well, you're a, you're a life coach and a motivational speaker. And people kept telling me I should be a life coach. I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Long story short, I'm now a life coach and motivational speaker. I, I do a lot of um, keynotes and things like that. So I, I really do enjoy um, being a coach and a speaker. And then 
the uh my daughter i'm a single mom 16 year old so prayers are always welcome around that uh she's driving around davis here right now i uh, just got her license and then my little dog um keeps me company gary and then my this last one i just put up there be the be the change you wish to see in the world that's truly where uh the space that i live from i want to be that change i i hope that everyone finds joy and um, satisfaction in their work. All right, so we're going to practice here really quick on with some annotation. So if you don't know how to annotate or haven't had the opportunity to do that yet, if you at the top of the screen that you see my screen share, there'll be a little thing that says you're viewing Lisa's screen and view options. And if you um, click down, you can annotate. So I'd like you to, um, if you can just put in the little, um, excuse me, the stamp part, that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> I can get that word out. The stamp, you can draw, you can stamp, but I, my preference is you stamp. There we go, we're stamping. We got some hearts and check marks. All right. We've got some annotation experts here. Good job. Okay, so we're gonna, I see that the majority of you are down with the annotating. So we're gonna go ahead and stop annotating now. So if you don't mind um, ceasing the practicing of that would be great. I'm gonna see if I can clear all of them. Okay. So what I'm, thank you for practicing that with me. So the objectives of this session is to identify your transferable skills, to write an accomplishment statement that aligns with your skills and the posi a position description of a desired job. If you don't, you're like, wait a minute, Lisa, I'm not even looking to go to another job. I just wanna know what some of my transferable skills might be. We could just, we're gonna practice writing accomplishment statements and we can just practice writing accomplishment statements for the current role that you're in. That's really the point of what we're doing here. And then, thinking about as you're moving forward in your career journey, those next steps, what are what are the jobs that you'd be interested in? Thinking about things that you might not have um, even considered previously. Many folks I, I talk with um, in my role, the, I've, a theme, a common theme I hear is people get stuck in like, well, this is all I can do. I'm in this, I'm in this department. I'm in this type of role. I can't get out of that. Talked to somebody who works in our transportation, our um, Unitrans, our bus system here on campus. And she couldn't see any, like she hit where she, um, her career tracks role in that job, but couldn't see anywhere else in that organization go. So it felt kind of stuck. And so we talked about all that once we started talking about what she does and those transferable skills, like the door just started opening. I love that. Helping people see that there's lots of possibilities. So if you can use the chat to no notate um, what your favorite responsibility you've ever had at work or that you can think of currently. Some of us may be, you know, mid-career, senior career, late career, like what? One thing. All right, what do we got? We got event planning, mail triage, connector, creating a newsletter, training and mentoring team members. Ha, deliver Porsches when you're 19. That sounds fun. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Being on the front line, designing, filling in gaps, facilitator. Teaching folks to fish. I love it. Ran a historical concert venue. There's so many things that people do. I love it. It's so fun to hear. Mentoring students, software rollout, launching, networking, event, another event planning, writing, being able to travel with an audit team, event planning. Awesome. So again, I can't read all of the things that are in the chat, but thanks for putting those in there and identifying what uh, responsibilities that you've identified that you enjoy in your work. 
presenting and advising. All right, we're still annotating here. Let me uh, remove the annotations really quick. Ooh, here we go. All right, so what are transferable skills? Again, let's use the chat again and maybe in relation to the, the favorite thing that you've done at work, what are some of the transferable skills you can identify in those tasks or um, things that you've done? Connecting with an audience, project management, idea organization, communication, critical thinking, public speaking. This is challenging my my visual reading. <laughs> endurance, endurance, yeah, problem solving, supervision, relationship management, conflict management, collaboration, lots of communication out there. The critical thinking, thinking outside the box, all of that. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing what you uh, see those transferable skills as being. So what are transferable skills? Define transferable skills are skills that people possess that are useful to employers across various jobs and industries. Sounds Sometimes I read that I read that and I go, well, duh. <laughs> but um, just to be a, uh, define what we mean by transferable skills, that it's things that you can use in um, a variety of spaces. Another another thing I hear frequently, or as it becomes a theme, is folks that maybe haven't completed a degree, um, and they don't put that down on their resume but they've almost completed their degree. Maybe they're 10 units away from completing their degree or they did their master's, but everything but the thesis or the PhD, all but the dissertation. All of that has to go on your resume, just a side note. It's really important, the skills that you've gained, those transferable skills that you gained by being, you know, having that education is really important. Just because you don't have the official piece of paper doesn't mean you didn't gain all the skills from taking those courses. So why they're important. It just makes you more marketable. I being able to identify for yourself the skills and that you have to offer is really important. All right, here's where we're going to use the uh, annotation thing again. And Teresa, if you can put the Berkeley website, awesome. Thank you so much. The this website, the Berkeley Skills uh, Transferable Skills Library. Once you identify your different transferable skills, or if there's a skill that you want to develop, there are lots of resources on that transferable skills uh, website to do so. So I want you to put stars, check marks, hearts, whatever stamp you've chosen to use on the top three that you might use in your role. Look at all those stamps, collaboration, organization, project, lots on project management, collaboration, problem solving. Like the people are drawing the check marks, talented with your mouse, good job. Is that a transferable skill? I'm not sure. Awesome. Okay. So the my hope is this demonstration is that we use almost all these things. I asked you to pick three, but these are just a select few of transferable skills, but really we use these often. Um, one that I get asked sometimes about like, well, what is political acumen? If you work in, in a university setting for very long or just as a professional, there's some political acumen that you need to have in order to navigate a, a system, the bureaucracy of the system. And we do problem solving all the time. I spoke with the landscaper the other day um, and 
she wants to transition, thinking about transitioning to something else. And um, that could be challenging. But uh, thinking about what skills are used in that space that can be applied in a different space. Okay, so Teresa, do, can you clear the um, annotations for me? Do you know how to do that? Or would you like me to? Okay, I'll go. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome, awesome. So applicant tracking systems are is software that uses the latest technology such as natural language processing and artificial intelligence to um, that employers use to scan resumes basically looking for keywords that match and using other algorithms for data analysis to shrink a pool of qualified candidates and prioritize decide to decide who to contact so you apply they run it through a, an ATS and then you're um, sent on to the hiring committee. So it's really, it is it is incredibly prevalent. Um, I know UC Davis uses a applicant tracking system. I'm, I would guess that all UCs use that because they, we employ so many people that it's, uh, we need a way to narrow down applicant pools. So what's useful is that is identifying your transferable skills and phrases and then matching those with keywords that um, are in the position description and using those exact words in the minimum requirements or the preferred requirements. So if they say, uh, I'm trying to think of an example, I should have written down an example, but um, excellent communication skills, written and verbal communication. I would say excellent written and verbal communication or skilled at written and verbal communication, but right having that actual written and verbal communication would be important. All right, here's where we're getting close to doing our um our breakout rooms. Again, there I see that more folks have joined us since I made this statement, but we will be going into breakout rooms. And if you aren't comfortable with doing that, totally fine. You can just stay here in the main room with us and uh we'll get we'll go back to our regularly scheduled program after the breakout rooms. So accomplishment statements, they are, they can be used to do bullet points on resumes, in your cover letter, in your uh, stories for an interview. Um, and Teresa, let's go ahead and turn off annotation if we can for now. Just thank you very much for that. So all of these, I'm not going to read all of these little things, but um, every single one of these has an action and result. So as you talk about uh, a bullet point in your resume, what was, so you're using an action verb, uh, what was the situation, what was the, what, what did you do about it, what was the task that you completed, and um, any action around that, and result, what was the result, and quantifying as much as you can, there's, uh, you can do qualitative or quantitative uh, bullet, bullet points, but having some sort of qualitative can be really impactful. So uh, I'm trying to think of an example somebody gave the other day. Um, they said something like reviewed budgets to save the unit money, like, you know, some, something like that. Uh, but saying reviewed $3 million worth of budgets and say was able to save $20,000. I don't know. Like you want to quantify if it's possible. So again, the emphasis when writing these accomplishment statements is that you're writing them designed to that specific role that you're applying for. So having a master resume is really important where you keep everything that you've ever done on that resume. And then um, being able to write these bullet points into the positions that you're applying for. Lisa, we have a okay. question in the chat. Oh, um, great. Should you mention the words in your cover letter as well as resume? Yes. Yeah, so you'll... Um, 
expand upon them in your cover letter. And then you can, so I see it as sort of a progression, like you're giving a teaser in your resume, you're giving a little bit more in your cover letter, which will hopefully then get you the interview where you can tell a little bit more about the story. So, yeah. Okay, so proof by example, specific examples, you should be able to identif identify specific and concrete examples, actually doing what you say you can do. If you say, hey, I'm a hard worker, come up with three different instances when you performed hard work. What does that look like? They can come from your life, your work, and your education experience. So those that are new professionals or you know, in the very beginning of your career, you may not have a whole portfolio of work to refer to, but you can refer to work life, your educational experience. It could be that you had five siblings and you had to take care of them, you know, all kinds of different things that you can use life, life experience. Naturally, a work example is best followed by education and training, but people remember stories and details more than empty statements. So giving examples like telling a story and it's a memorable way of marketing your skills. Oh, where'd that go? Did I, there we go. So details, anytime you give an example, include the detail, the who, the what, when, where, why, and how. It helps complete your story about your skills. And I, as I mentioned earlier, add numbers. Whenever you can give an example, try to use numbers. Employers can use the number to compare you with your competition, possibly. Uh, instead of saying, I budgeted, I manage budgets for three different departments, say, I managed and oversaw three departmental budgets totaling over $5 million in university and grant funds. Instead of saying, I did some work as a supervisor, add more details. Say, I was responsible for six people, two out of every five working days, for example. And those results... I don't know how much I agree with this statement. I have a little um, varying opinion on it, but uh, if your action didn't turn out to be positive, that's where I'd save for an interview. Like uh, having an example, often they'll ask in an interview, where was a time where you made a mistake or you didn't succeed or something? So having a story where you tried something, it didn't work out so well, you had to iterate and do something different, but generally think about positive examples that you have when you're trying to determine your result. So make sure that you use numbers when telling the interviewer about your positive results and know how you measured them. How did you? How do you know that your results were good? And again, making sure to connect the dots. You wanna tell the interviewer or in your resume cover letter, show how your skills are using the example to match the skills in that job description that you are applying for, the, the role that you're applying for. Just because you used your skill to do something great doesn't guarantee the employer um, will see how your example fits into what they want or need. <laughs> Most employers aren't good at mind reading, giving them a more a, a clear story. If you want them to know something, tell them, be clear about it. All right, this um, Teresa is going to post in the chat just some questions to think about as you seek to identify your accomplishments. These are some of the questions that you can be asking yourself. So this is an example of a marketing transferable um, transferable skills for a system analyst wanting to move to a project manager. So they said, my extensive experience analyzing user requirements and developing procedures for all departments resulted in improved computer systems throughout my organization, maintaining deal to have reports, collaborating with the management team, and determining support necessary for successful project completion would directly contribute to your project manager position. So again, I highlighted the things that are transferable skills, developing procedures, analyzing user requirements, determining support necessary. There's no numbers in this one exactly, but it highlights the skills that they have and how it's transferable from their uh, systems analyst to looking to be a project manager. All right, this is an example. Um, so a, a strong example, hosted networking events that increased membership and promoted community awareness. A stronger example, 
will be hosted 15 networking events, drawing an attendance of more than 2,000 community members that resulted in a 30% 30 per, 30 membership increase. So that, that has more impact. So you, the first one's not bad. It's great, but it has more, gives you a better idea of what it's going to take from a person that did this to networking events. It could have been two dinner for faculty. I don't know. And you, you just like put it on their calendar. That could be <laughs> networking events. What did, what did you do? How many people did you serve? Another example. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I've got some other examples, but thinking about this um, example, which of these you could put this in the chat. Which of these? Um, wow, I said it so many times today. I forget what the. It just like it's. You've said it enough already. Transferable skills. Which of these transferable skills might this person have used in the hosting networking events and community members? Project management. Yeah. Organization for sure. I yeah, I can't think of honestly any one of these that you might not use in creating an event or doing hosting events like that. You're gonna manage people, you're gonna have conflict, you're gonna need to communicate things, you have to manage your time, managing a project. Awesome. I'm going to read just a couple other examples. I want to give some quantitative and qualitative examples. So a quantitative example, in addition to the one that I gave and the one right before that, is handled late accounts effectively, securing $5,000 in past due accounts. Gained a reputation for working well on a team, receiving a team player award. Team player award. Raised more than 10000 in an annual fundraiser, increasing attendance and media coverage from previous years. Maintained internet site as it grew 2,000 plus stages and images that generated 200 hits daily. Some qualitative accomplishment statements. Organized database to track business contacts and was commended for attention to detail and accuracy. I think that that's a really, really good one. An example, instead of just saying organized the data Organized database to track business contacts, period. That could that could be an accomplishment statement. That's what you did. But noting that you were commended for your attention to detail and accuracy speaks to those transferable skills. Broaden and maintain an extensive network of contacts and clients. Interactive with diverse cus customers on a constant basis, promoting excellent communication and customer service skills. And praise for the ability to solve difficult problems independently and efficiently. So those are some of those qualitative examples. All right. So Teresa, if you could clear those annotations again for me, that'd be awesome. And we are going to head into the breakout rooms here. Uh, Lisa, I, I got a question, a anonymous oh. question, if you have a moment. Okay, great. Sure. In a case like this, where many different transferable skills apply to accomplished statements, which skills should we prioritize? Mm, that is an excellent question. I would prioritize the ones that you leaned on the most. And let me, see, and what's in the job description. So the position description that you're applying for, if you may have used all of them, but they're looking for three specific skills that you might've used in that situation, I would use those specific skills. So reverse what I just said, I would use the job description and then the ones that you leaned on. Thanks. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna spend eight, minutes in the breakout room. We're going to just have two to three people in each room, and we're going to discuss an accomplishment statement for your current role or a role that you're interested in applying for. So again, you don't have to um, join a breakout room. You're welcome to stay here in the main room. So I see that there's people dropping off, but um, it, I encourage you to stick around. If you don't want to do the breakout room, that's fine. Teresa's going to get those set up and Think about how you might come up with one of the star, par, car, or soar statements for something that you do in your current role. What questions, if any, do we have before we get started? Okay. Okay. I will start opening up the breakout rooms. 
All right. Thank you. Okay, I think everyone is back. Thank you. I got a we had a comment that a hard task to do on spur of the moment, but a good exercise. And yes, it is a difficult task to to think about that. Um, coming up with something kind of spur of the moment and in a short amount of time. So hopefully you at least got the conversation started or spurred some uh, good thoughts for you all in the breakout rooms. I'm just curious if anyone has something to share or a question maybe that you might have that might have come up in your in your room feel free to are they allowed to unmute Teresa can they no, unmute themselves or no? I no? Can, okay yeah no that's okay if you raise your hand we'll go ahead and unmute you so if you have something to say or like to share okay Greg thank you so much hi okay so well um I will start just sharing the other two people in my room all of us had the same question, which is, we still don't know what jobs we're going to transfer to. So to do an exercise where I'm going to show you how this thing in my present job will transfer this job, it, see, it feels mm. irrelevant. It feels like, how's that? I don't even know where to begin. So I'm sure I'm not That's, alone. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you're not alone. And thank you so much for bringing that up, Greg. Um, yeah, it's it's challenging as I'm talking about transferable skills. I've I guess I wanted you to practice writing an accomplishment statement. So whether it's relevant to the the role that you are going into or not, that you're just getting some practice with what are the kinds of things that I can say? How can I quantify what I've done? How can I write these um, robust and active accomplishment statements? Then you can adjust them as needed when you're applying for new roles. So I can be more clear about that moving forward, but thank you so much. I hope that helped clarify a little bit. Thanks, Greg. Really, really appreciate that. I'm sure, yeah, I was going to say, raise your hands. I'm sure you're not alone. There's a lot of people that probably experienced that. Anyone else have a question or comment on your thinking about writing an accomplishment statement? Kathleen. Uh, yeah, something that came up for us, uh, sometimes it's hard to have um, to to figure out numbers for our particular role, but even if we have some numbers, it's really not clear of what if if or how we contributed them. Like like to what extent we contributed mm. to that result. Like there's just a lot of fuzzy stuff around data. Like either having the measurable impact and using statements that might have that quantity amount in them, or um, if we have the quantity, like not knowing exactly how we might have contributed to that number becoming that number. We might have had a role in the project, but it's unclear if that role is what increased intention, retention, or maybe the next year retention goes down and retention was just because of um, the something at the larger university level. So not knowing exactly how we fit into mm. that impact or taking ownership over that. Yeah, I think that's a pretty robust question and a good one. I would say, um, you know, contributing or was a part of a team that contributed to blah, blah, blah. And if there was a specific role that you played in that, you can say was the project manager, the budget analyst, or the whatever role that you played in that. Um, because I think it's sometimes, yeah, it's saying like a, a whole unit it's not, you're not solely responsible for that, but you played a part in a team, which I think is important because you're a team player. You're part of a team that achieved that larger result. Hope that helps a little bit. Michael? Hi, everyone. Um, I have a confession. I didn't write anything because me and my group, we were talking, we, were, we had a great uh, introduction of each other. We all talked about how we like the people and we like the physical campuses and we like to get out and see things. But I know in my job in particular, that is not my job. My job is to be in my office working by myself with my door closed. For the most part, there is some social aspects of it. But my superpower, I think, and gift to the campus is an interaction with the people. But I don't know how to translate interacting with the people, not um, like sending out email communications, but like one-on-one, -on -one, hi, hi, Lisa, how are you, connections. I don't know how to turn that into a job, but hmm. maybe that's for another. Hi, Allison. 
<laughs> that sounds like a great topic for a career coach to talk with <laughs> yep. on your campus to talk with somebody about that. Yeah, I think just, you know, reaching out. One thing I do often is I'll do um, co-working sessions with people in different units. We're working on totally different things, but we're in, especially since a lot of us work remotely or on Zoom a lot. So we work together and then it inevitably brings up some sort of conversation or I'm like working on something. Well, what do you think about that? Or so that's just one example of kind of a way to network with others and somebody that you know in a different department that you might be interested in in uh, getting to know better. Let's see. I'm just taking a look at the um, comments in the chat. Let's see. Uh, hardest part, we have quantifying the results. Absolutely. I think we addressed that. It can be challenging. Um, and that's where talking with others can be helpful. I often find when I'm talking with people and they they share their accomplishment statement with me and then I'm able to draw out a little bit more information, then we can get to that point. Sometimes it's hard to come up with it ourselves. And same with action verbs, like having an action verb. If you tell me to come up with an action verb, I'm kind of like, uh, I'm not exactly sure where to start, but there's lists of action verbs for resumes and cover letters online that will prompt you to think, oh yeah, that's it. That names it. I can't exactly pinpoint it, but this is the thing. This is what names it. Oh, I love that. Um, could y'all do cross UC co-working? Absolutely. I think it's, to me, that's important to connect not only on our own campus, but other campuses. If you're connecting with people who are doing work that you're interested in or that you want to get to know, that, yeah, you can co-work together and get stuff done. I always am more, this is just me, how I operate. Not everybody operates this way. I'm more efficient when I'm working with others. I'm very much a collaborator, team player. So I'm going to attempt very briefly to go over career tracks. And I'm going to point to Berkeley's career tracks, but it career tracks is a... Um, classification system used by all the UCs for non-represented positions. So I want to be clear that I'm talking about non-represented roles versus represented roles. Represented roles are people that are um, represented by a union, thus the represented. Non-represented are people that aren't represented by a, um, a union. So when you... Um, so career tracks is kind of tiered. So there's job families. It's a group of functions that are in a general occupation. So my, my role is in general administration. A job function is more specific with that, within that. My payroll title is organizational consultant three. Then I have a working title of senior career counselor because I don't know anybody who's going to seek out an organizational consultant three to talk about career related stuff, but they see that, oh, you're a career coach. We can talk to you about career related stuff. And then job standards is the description of the scope, the key responsibilities, the knowledge um, and abilities that you need to have for a specific role. In represented roles, they have job specs, so they don't look exactly like what career tracks has, but they, there are like, what is a, a lab assistant one, lab assistant two, lab assistant three, and it gives you the types of tasks that you would complete in that role. So there's a similar system there. And this is just a visual of what that looks like. So the family, then there's categories of operational and technical, professional, and supervisors and managers. So I kind of think of it like this tiered area. So you've got operational and technical, there's three levels, professional one through five. So I'm an organizational consultant three, there's an organizational consultant four and five. So you're building on your skills to get to that next step. And then managers, supervisors are managers, which means that you're um, supervising two plus FTE, full-time employees. And the other thing about um Oh, and a question that I get very often is, well, I topped out. I'm at I'm at a five. 
or I'm at a four and there aren't any fives. What do I do now? So thinking about how we grow our careers in the UC system, it's not tiered it, necessarily. It's tiered, but it's not tiered at the same time. You know, there's There are different levels in a certain area, but if you get to the top of that level, you're most likely going to need to move on to a different role. It doesn't have to be a manager role, but it's going to be a role that's in a different pay uh, pay range. And I'm I'm not going to go through all of that necessarily, but um, because it is a bit nuanced. So I had Teresa put in the chat the link to the career tracks, the information for Berkeley, the college, you know, um, UC Office of the President has the website to look up salary scales. So you could look up uh, what are all of the payroll titles in scale, salary scale 20? I'm in salary scale 19. What is What are the roles in salary scale 20 look like? And then you can, um, all, you, all of the UCs should at some point have job builder. So UC Berkeley has that already. So those of you who work at Berkeley have it already. If you work at UC Davis, UC Davis Health, you have access to it. UC Davis campus, not, I'm not sure about the other UCs if your job builders are up and running, but what that does is it shows you your current job description, and then you can go in and explore and look at, and you want to pick four different roles and different families or different functions, and you want to see what's similar about those roles and what's different about the roles. So you can compare them on screen, sort of like in your Amazon shopping cart where you're comparing different products. You're like, oh, this is what's different about them. You can do a similar thing with career tracks roles. This is um, UC Davis career tracks. This is um, the website for ours. And this is just the example that I gave as I was talking about the job family function category. So I'm in the general administration family job function is organizational consulting. My category is professional, not operational, technical, and not manager. I'm in the professional. And then my career level is organizational consultant three, working title, senior career coach. This is what the families look like. So there's, and again, this is UC-wide. So there may be some families on here or uh, even functions on there that your campus doesn't have. There's not a need for it in your space, but it is, again, UC-wide. These are all the same. So I just am highlighting where I where we found where I found mine. I'm like, when I before I started this role, I didn't I didn't even know that career tracks existed. So I've learned a lot about career tracks since taking on this job. So I had to figure out where I sat in the structure. So general administration, then that organizational consulting there highlighted. And then when you click into the job specs and standards, you'll see, again, the family, the, the family, the function, the category, what the job summary is. And then here in the job level, job title, the job code is where you can look up in that, uh, the tcs.ucop.edu. You can put that code in and it will tell you what salary level you're at. And this is just another way of visualizing it. It's just the way that my mind was able to see the family function category and then breaking out into those individual contributor series. And I'll I'll be sending the, um, or we'll put in the chat the link to, and I think it's online too, but the link to all these slides so you can refer to it at a later time. This is just an example of what the knowledge, skills, and abilities look like. So if I'm... And my intention in showing you this is thinking about, okay, I'm in an intermediate role. How do I get to an experienced role or an advanced role? It's thinking about how you're building those transferable skills and growing your skills that you already have, having them be more robust. So I'm taking a look at um, experienced knowledge, skills, and abilities for, so this in the experienced, possess effective verbal and written communication skills. In the advanced, they're looking for strong consulting, relationship building, and strategic thinking skills. And as an expert, 
You have to have superior analytical problem solving, project planning, and implementation skills. So that's what this um, knowledge, skills, and ability level four, we're growing in that area. So how, for example, would I progress from effective verbal and written communication skills to demonstrating that I have strong consulting and relationship building uh, and strategic thinking skills? Lisa, I have a question. Yes. Yeah. Um, so hopefully you can answer. Uh, someone is in the job builder viewing their job description, which is mostly blank. They only see the system title and job ID. Where can they get more information? Are they, I'm curious if they're a Berkeley employee or another employee. How long has Berkeley had, um, had job builder? Um, I it's, think within the last couple of years. Okay. So uh, it's uh, not, JDX is brand new, JDX says Allison. Is brand new. Allison knows yeah. that. So, yes, they're <laughs> Thanks, with Allison. Okay. <laughs> um, my guess would be it's just not fully operational yet. Like, or there's pieces that they're still working on potentially, but I would ask your supervisor why your job description isn't in there because everyone's position is that's the whole point of job builder is that we should have access individually to our position descriptions and not have to go to our supervisors to necessarily see what our jobs are. So if your job is empty, I would talk to your supervisor or your HR representative about that, but you can still utilize job builder to compare different roles. And if okay. you know what your like, if your payroll title, when you're in what is that called? UC Path. And when you're in UC Path, you can go in there and um, find out your working title and then go to um, Job Builder and look that up. Okay. It sounds like from the chat, this is a problem with a lot of folks. Okay. And we got one, yeah. more, one more question in the Q&A, Anonymous. If a non-represented position recently got accredited to a union, would the information from the job builder transfer to how the new union now classifies them? The answer is it should, whether it does or not, I'm not sure. So the the hope is yes. So again, I would contact your um, supervisor or HR representative about that. One other thing I just wanted to point out in here, um, it says career path. I was super confused when I looked at this at first. So if I that was, in, was not educated on the system, I didn't know when I saw career path one, that makes sense. Okay, organizational consultant, two, three, four, five. And then you could go to an org dev manager. But then, oops, when I go to career path two or three, I'm like finance, financial analysts, financial, an what, how, do, that is not a career path I would necessarily be on. What that means is that those are the same pay grades. So intermediate organizational consultant three is at the same pay grade as a financial analyst professional and the same pay grade as HR generalist one or two, I would say be a two. So again, I'm trying to explain a really robust system in a very short amount of time. So hopefully you can do more research at your own institution. If you are at UC Davis by chance, I do a whole day workshop that we go over even more of this information and we dive in individually. So what's next? Thinking about this job to any job, identifying those transferable job, uh, skills associated with responsibilities listed in those minimum qualifications, matching those transferable skills to your position description, and again, I want to notate kind of thinking about what Greg said earlier, identifying what your transferable skills are now, even if you're not looking, like you don't have a role that you're looking for. There's nothing that you want to apply it to. It's helpful to start thinking about what those skills are. So when you're looking at position descriptions, you can think, oh yeah, that is transferable to that, to that role. And thinking about pivoting, like I pivoted from student services to human resources but how was what I was doing as a student services provider tangential and transferable to what I do here in human resources? So being able to communicate your transferable skills. And then as you, so maybe you have five accomplishment statements from your current role, then you can modify those for the position that you're applying for. So my hope is that you are seeing that you have more skills than you might've thought you had. 
that you have done more than you think. Making sure you have that master resume is key. Reminding the, the abbreviations for the accomplishment statements. Matching those position descriptions with position descriptions with transferable skills. And you are truly qualified for more jobs than you've done. And you can develop new transferable skills. So you can go to that website that uh, Teresa put in initially, the Berkeley website, the transferable skills library. And maybe you want to develop more communication skills. You want public speaking because that's something you want to grow in. You can take a look at ways to grow that. So I'm curious, um, where are we at with time? We have, does this go till 1240? Yes. Okay. Um, I am going to skip that question because I want to get to seeing if there's any questions at the end, but there's a couple of things I want to share. Just really quick. This is the 70, uh, the 70, 20, 10 model, thinking about where we learn, where do we learn um, on the, is it on the job? Is it in a SDPS class or a, a, a um, in the UC Learning Center? Is it reading that I do? Is it education that I need to have? Or is it in a mentoring or supervision? So the majority of learning we do is on the job. So having that experience in the role, doing the work is where we grow the most. And then learning with others and then formal learning is the last. So this is what our the UC Davis's system looks like, the UC Learning Center. I think all UCs have some form of UC Learning Center where you can go in and, and um, do your mandatory trainings and other trainings, certificates. Everyone does have access to my UC career. You just, I would, I don't know if I had the website for that, but it's it's right there on the on the page. I always just Google my UC career and it comes right up. So you can use this to identify those skills find ways to develop them. You can find resume, cover letter, all kinds of um, helpful information there. All right, what questions, if any, do we have? And then the last slides I have, have a bunch of resources. So again, Teresa, if you can put those, uh, put the slides in the chat, that would be awesome. So everyone has access to those links. I know we only have a couple minutes. I can stick around just for a few minutes more if folks have questions about what we've talked about today. Thank you for joining me. I hope this was helpful in thinking about your transferable skills. Feel free to raise your hand if you have a question and we can unmute you if needed or you can put it in the chat or the Q and A. Did I miss any in the Q and A? As a UC, good question. As a UC Davis employee, you can go to uh, career services or career resources, career development resources, human resources, career development resources. And then I have a webpage that has everything that I offer, my one-on-one -on -one appointments, that kind of thing. And there's a, I think there's a link if I remembered on my, yep. On the, the last slide, I've got links to my page, my LinkedIn, and how to make a, a coaching appointment with me. The question was, are you helping coach other UC employees or specifically UCD right now? This we have, I'm coaching UCD employees um, and each campus should have their own so some sort of career resources for you. UC Berkeley has a robust coaching program. So if you're a UC Berkeley employee, you actually have um, access to that. But I am a coach on the side. So if you're like, wow, but I really like you, Lisa, and I want to work with you somehow, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and we could chat. Mm -hmm. All right, any other questions? All right, enjoy the rest of the time uh, programming this today. Thanks for being here.